you like the idea of driving a car for fun, chances are you've heard of the M3. And if you know what an M3 is, you probably have the E46 as one of your favourite cars. The E46 M3 was catapulted forward from the success of the E36. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that this is the best M3 that was ever released, but it's probably the most recognisable. And what it means is, this is one fun car to haul ass in. The E30 was a proper loud, fast and harsh sports car. The newer cars, and now the M4, probably have more in common with the GT than what they did with their original ancestor. I think that's why the E46 holds such a special place with enthusiasts, because it was probably one of the last sports cars for the M3s. It struck a good balance between being a good sports car and giving you just enough luxury to feel special without it being a GT. It isn't as fast around a track or even in an absolute sense as its descendants. But on the other hand, it doesn't feel like it's battling its size or its weight to perform. It feels like it's a more balanced, more nimble, more aggressive car, and it's definitely fun to drive. For a car that feels so sporty and so planted, it's actually quite comfortable. It does really strike a good balance between being able to feel comfortable pushing it as well as feel comfortable driving it. One of the things you find with cars that have very high horsepower per litre is the power tends to come on a bit late. Not as extreme as a turbo, but it definitely bogs down. But when it opens up and it gets into the right spot... Man, the power comes on. One of my favourite things about the old straight six M3s is they had individual throttle bodies. And as far as I'm concerned, that is the best induction note that you can get from an engine. As soon as you open it up, there's this loud grunt, which turns into a whine as the RPM builds. I am glad that this car actually has an aftermarket exhaust though, because by the time it did get to this car, regulations were a bit harsher and they kind of softened the engine noise from the E36. M cars always tend to have a really good finish. When you start to look at it, you realise that for what it is, it's really well finished. Even compared to more expensive sports cars, they tend to have a lot of nice parts, like in this you get all the brushed aluminium. I do see a couple of them with carbon fibre. They did tend to have a bit of a badge fetish though with the M cars, but it's rather subtle and it's not until you actually start counting that you realise how much of it there is. This particular car is actually equipped with the SMG2, and I know driving purists will always say it's better with a manual, but if I'm honest, it's actually a lot of fun to drive, if you're the driver. If you're the passenger, I think you might as well just call it vomit shifting. Or if you're trying to drive it slowly, or in a parking lot, or reversing, or trying to do anything smoothly, really. I do have one gripe with the SMG, though. It has this silly little button, which is meant to adjust how quickly the shifts happen. All it really does is change how long it takes for the shift to happen. So you're even less prepared for when it kicks you in the back of the head. This is a car I would absolutely love to take around a track one day. It handles well, it sounds great, and it just really deserves to be opened up and treated the way that it was made.